Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from DevTactic and the Ionic Academy. Today we will build a simple Ionic app and integrate Firebase with the Angular Fire package uh, in the newest version, which is for uh, in the first release candidate. So I've already started a blank new uh, app with Ionic and I've also created an Ionic uh, Firebase project inside Firebase, so I haven't changed anything there yet. Uh, first step is to install Angular Fire with this uh, release candidate currently and the Firebase package as well to our app. And once this is done, we will also generate an additional provider for our Firebase uh, connection because uh, I kind of like to put all the logic into one uh, additional provider. So to configure our uh, Firebase connection, we have to go to our Firebase app and click Add Firebase to your web app. And then you can simply copy out this snippet and paste it to your app module TS. Perhaps we will uh, call it Firebase config so it's clear for everyone. And then we have to import a few things. So let me copy them in and explain what we are doing. Okay, so we need the HTTP module, uh, very standard um, and nothing special. But now you can see that um, there are different sub packages of Angular Fire 2. And if you want to use, for example, database, you have to import this specific database module. Uh, if you want authentication, that would be in another package as well. But in our case, we just use those. And also we need to call Angular Fire module initialize app so this is more or less like uh, in previous versions so we initialize the angular fire module with the config for our uh, firebase app finally we also have to add our firebase service down here to our providers array and now all the imports should be fine for now um Okay, perhaps I lied because I tested it, but we will delete it. Um, we're not using authentication in this example and therefore you have to change your rules. So you have read and write access just for everyone. In generally, here would be uh, some authentication rules, but by passing true, we disable them so everyone can read and write our data. Okay, our app is not giving any errors by now, which is uh, kind of good so we can go ahead and implement our provider. What we need here is of course um, the public AFD and this is the Angular Fire uh, almost database not database module but the import is more or less right. So we need to put it to our constructor as usual and then we will have three functions inside our uh, provider. First of all, we want to uh, get shopping items. So this will return a list of items. And then we will, of course, have add item and finally remove item with an ID. So these three are our functions and connections to the database. Um, when we want to get our shopping items, we can call this.afd.list because it will be a list of objects and then we only have to specify at which node so we say shopping items and all the tiles below shopping items will be returned as an observable actually we can remove this as well now if we want to add items we can use more or less the same because the connection is the same but now Onto our list we call push with the new uh, name. So a new item will be pushed to the list and when we call push, uh, a unique ID will be automatically created inside Firebase and we will see this in a second. Finally, if we want to remove an item, again, we use the same reference, but now we call remove and simply pass the ID for the object right here. Now we can close all of this and go to our actual home page. 
And here we need um, our public Firebase service. So it's the Firebase service. Here we will have a list of shopping items which we will get from our Firebase service. And this is a Firebase list observable. So of course the import is not working, but you can import it simply from uh, Angular Fire 2 slash database. So this fixes our problem. Now in our constructor, we can now set our shopping items to uh, get shopping items from our own provider. And by doing this, we can keep everything clean and we will have those references only in these spots. Of course, it's easy to simply use Firebase here and have the references directly here. But again, um, it's a bit more clean if you uh, do it like this. So here we need as well add item and remove item, just like the functions we implemented. And to add an item, we will have um, an input field connected to a variable right here, which is new item. And once we hit uh, add item, we will call our Firebase service add item and pass uh, this dot new item. So this makes it really easy if you've implemented the provider accordingly. Um, so again, this Firebase and now remove item. Uh, perhaps we pass the ID through from the view. Okay, this is already our uh, class. And the last missing step now is to implement the view. Uh, let's see if it's still compiling. Yeah, that's a very good sign. So we go to our view and we call it uh, shopping list, perhaps some color here. And inside the content, we will create a simple ion list with uh, items. And above the list, we will create our input where we uh, distribute the space to two columns. Perhaps the first column is nine. The second can take the rest of the size. And here we'll add an ion input of the type text. And it will be connected through the ng model with our new item. And as a placeholder, oh no, not like this new shopping item. Okay, and in the second column, we put a button, nothing fancy here. We just want to make sure we can add an item. And that's it. Now we can already see our input and add stuff to it. Uh, let me see looking a bit strange and displaced. So ion call, ion call nine, ion row. I'm not sure lately, um, some things tend to broke with my setup, but whatever, we got the input field and we got the add field, so we should be happy by now, yeah. Whatever, whatever it looks so, ah, okay, yeah. Of course, inside the ion call, we could put an ion item which wraps our input and then it looks a bit better. Now to the list. Uh, we want the option to uh, slide our uh, to do's or uh, no to do's, <laughs> our groceries of the shopping list to the side. So we use ion item sliding, which gives us the option um, to add a sliding button to the side. The most interesting part here perhaps is the ng4 loop where we go over the items of our shopping items array. And as this is an observable, we use the async pipes so everything should work by using this. Now the item of this list is simply the item dot value. We haven't stored an object as item in our list. We will see this inside Firebase in a second. So we can just use directly the value. 
to get our sliding effect, we now add ion item options and we pick the side right so we can slide it in from the right side. Again, button, ion, button. And this time the color should be somehow red. Uh, maybe only an icon. And once we click this, we call remove item with item dollar key. So this was uh, the value of our item and now we're using only the key. Um, to close this, we need also an icon. So ion icon name, uh, we use trash and then we got it. So let's see, now it looks a lot better. We type banana, we add the banana, it appears in our list and at the same time it appears right here. So let's add a few more, apple, uh, whatever. So we can see inside our shopping items uh, node, we got three uh, childs. This is uh, the key and this is the value. So what we used right here, the value is what we passed initially and the key is the automatically generated key from Firebase. Now if we slide the item to the side, uh, color equals danger, mm, I'm not sure, in my world this is red, but let's see, yeah okay now it's red. Um, if we hit delete we can see that Apple gets removed from the node and also immediately disappears from our list. So we can simply remove items by their ID and we also got the ID here. Okay, this was uh, quite a lot of information in a very short time, but now you uh, know how to connect your Ionic app to Firebase using Angular Fire and how to add and remove items to a list using Angular Fire. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you want more training, make sure to check out the Ionic Academy for training and projects and community and more. And I hope we will see us the next time once again on the Dev Tactic channel.